In this week's Signal Minute, got 04.6 and 4.5.1 news, a trade system update, two games of the week, end of the week, and of course our tip of the week. Welcome to Signal Minute, your weekly news video for Godot related news. I'm Voilin and Godot isn't sitting still. This week Godot released Godot 4.6 Dev Build 1 and the first release candidate for 4.5.1. The reason why these two releases are so close together is because the bug fixes from 4.6 are being backported to make 4.5 more stable. This is Godot's usual version release pattern, so we'll mainly go over the new stuff in the 4.6 release. At this moment, there aren't any big features being added to Godot 4.6 yet, but we got drag and drop for export variables, an open XR update for real world environment awareness. And now the editor also gives more fine controls over when UI focus is shown. And no longer will you have to restart the editor after changing custom themes. And of course there are some other small updates. But for 4.6, the biggest features so far are going to be the new trade system and the new editor team. Um, yeah, those updates will come at a later stage. There's not really any like roadmap yet of when those will be added. But they should be coming in 4.6. The abstract system which we got in the 4.5 update is amazing, but the trade system might be even better and something to really look forward to. And then it's time for some personal project promotion. Gozen, my video editor which I'm making Godot, has had a version update and now we're sitting at version 0.4.1 alpha. If you want to support Gozen, you can by testing out the project and report bugs and feature request. So yeah, give it a try with the link in the description and with that out of the way, let's go over to our creator spotlights. For this week's creator spotlight, I present to you the YouTube channel Lucky. Lucky is a creator who focuses on the entire process of bringing ideas, game ideas, to life. You'll find videos that cover a wide range of topics including game development, prototyping and world building. But most people probably know his channel from his video explaining all the nodes in Godot. If you're a Godot developer, then it is really worth checking out his channel and to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of his uploads. Every now and then he also showcases some amazing projects from other people. So it's also a very good way to stay up to date with what the Godot community is up to. And then for other topics, the Godot trade system is... no more? Is what you would think by looking at this PR since it got closed without merging. But what's actually happening is that it got split into two PRs due to the scale of this whole trade system implementation. Right now the plan is to add the trade system first and after that it will go over to the global trade system for the next PR. Since everything is still too much into development right now and nothing has been officially merged yet or confirmed yet of how implementations will work, it's difficult to say how everything will exactly work and to give more information about it. Anyway, until this PR gets merged, there's not really much to say more about this, but once it gets implemented, I'll sure keep everybody up to date. And then up to some strange but creative news. FaceDev is a YouTuber who does, well, yeah, not, not really certain what he does, but his content can be described as interesting and entertaining. And in his latest video, he made his own web again. And this time using Godot. And yes, I said again, because he has done it once before. The Wayfinder or the browser is made with Godot and yeah, it, it is kind of difficult to explain his project. Basically, he made his own web. So the normal web works, works with HTTP and HTTPS. Well, he made his own format and yeah. There will be a link to his video in the description below. It's open source, so you can take a look at the GitHub project. He even made a site for it. Yeah, <laughs> he has made some very, very interesting projects. So yeah. Check out his channel for other content as well. And then up to some more game related news. The Godot Wild Jam winner of last month is the project Vina. Vina is a round based strategy game in which you build, expand and survive by placing your tiles wisely to shape the flow of resources. For a game jam game, going for a strategy game is quite challenging because of all the features and implementations that you need to get right on mechanics and such. But the result is a very enjoyable game to play. Give it a try with the link in the description. And next up, I have this Reddit post from Might of Merchants about his procedural city generation. The creator can select an area and his algorithm creates a custom city map. This tool is called Canvas of Kings and it is in early alpha right now, 
but it looks quite nice already. In the comments he goes a little bit more into detail of how he achieved this result. Another interesting project to take a look at. And then for this week's Game of the Week section, um, yeah, we'll do it slightly different because there will be two games to take a look at. First up, Blood Thief. Blood Thief is an ultra-fast melee dungeon runner where you use your momentum to parkour through dangerous dungeons and slash your enemies. You play as a vampire and you use the blood of your enemies to fuel your abilities. Find your way through dungeons and labyrinths full of shortcuts and branching paths. Blood Chief offers a challenging and fun experience and I'd recommend checking this game out. This game got recently released and already has over 100 positive reviews. And now for the second game I present to you Trainetic. Trainetic? Trainetic is an incremental train building game in which you upgrade your cars and gather resources to get further down the track. This game got released this month and already has over 470 reviews with 92% giving it a positive rating. If you're a fan of trains and incremental games, be certain to check this game out. There will be a link in the description as usual. And then let's add some add-ons to our games. Or better yet, let's start with a starter kit. For this week's add some add-ons, I present to you the Platformer Kit of Kenny's. This kit is completely free and provides the basic starting blocks to create a 3D platformer. If you've wanted to create some sort of platformer before, but you didn't know where to exactly start, this is going to be perfect for you. You can play the project, go through the scripts and start building your own 3D platformer with ease. This starter kit is completely free under the CC0 and MIT license, meaning it's free to use for whatever you want and there will be a link to the GitHub page in the description below. So check it out and be certain to check out all the other work of Kenny's as his assets are very, very helpful to have. Be certain to support his work if you like his work. And then next up for this week's tip of the week, I present to you Regions. Have you ever gone through your code in the built-in editor and found that it's a little bit too long and you want to more categorize every part of your code and hide the parts you don't want to look at? Well, you can with regions. You can type hashtag region and the name of how you want that region to be called. And then at the end of the block of code that you want to be able to collapse, you add hashtag and region. It's honestly as simple as that and now you can easily fold and unfold that region of code to make things a bit easier to go through. One more tip though, if your code really gets too long for you to easily go through it, instead of adding tons of regions, maybe consider cutting some parts of your code and putting it into separate scripts, as that could be even better for organizing your code and staying organized overall. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching Signal Minutes. A uh, big shout out to all my coffee supporters. Thank you so much for the support that you've been giving me. And yeah, last week there was no video. I could not really get myself to physically get up and actually make a video. But anyway, videos are going again. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with these weekly videos. And I'll see you all in next week's video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.